everyone and welcome to Telecom TV's Main Agenda Super Panel, hosted once again at the fabulous Lohman Museum in Den Haag in the Netherlands. We are kindly sponsored once again by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel, and the topic of this evening's panel is No NFV, No 5G. Let me introduce our expert guests. And on stage I have, from my left, Marcus Brunner, who is Chief Researcher and Head of Standardization at Swisscom. Welcome again, Marcus. Hi. Reno Navale, who is Senior Director, Networks Platform Group at Intel. Hi. Welcome, Renu. Diego Lopez Garcia, who is Head of Technology Exploration and Standards at Telefonica. Welcome, Diego. Hello. Jan Savi, who is Executive Leader, All IP and On Demand Networks Program at Orange. Nice Welcome. to be here. And finally, but by no means least, Domenico Convertino, who is Head of OSS BSS at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to kick things off with a few questions myself first, and then we're going to invite members of you, the audience, to participate during the actual panel discussion. I've got a microphone here, and I'll be wandering around uh, and hoping to um, get as many questions asked and answered as we possibly can in the time we have. Let's start, though, by just reminding ourselves of a recent telecom TV survey on the evolution to 5G. One of the interesting points that came out of that was 83% of CSPs who participated agreed that NFE was very important to 5G networks. Now, that sounds pretty overwhelming, but what does our audience think? So, come on, let's have a show of hands first of all. All those of you who, at this moment in time, believe NFE is very important to 5G, please raise your hands. Quick count here. Yes. Great. Okay, I have a number. <laughs> All those who don't, raise your hands. Oh. Oh. Who would have thought that? <laughs> well, that's um, pretty overwhelming. So, <laughs> on to question one. The first and most obvious question, really, is what is it about the 5G standard? And I know release 15 is out and there's a lot more 5G goodness still to come from release 16, but what is about the 5G standard that would necessitate CSPs adopting NFV? Domenico, let's start with you and go down our guests. But I think that uh, we, can, uh, we can have different use cases in, uh, in 5G that will, uh, that will require uh, virtualization, but at the end of the day, the entire 5G is uh, related to the real ability to cloudify a number of network functions that, uh, that we have in the mobile, uh, in the mobile network. And uh, basically, there is uh, no cloudification uh, without, uh, without virtualization. So it's just a prerequisite to get, uh, to get there. So the real question we should ask to ourselves is not if NAV is needed. The real question is if virtualization is enough or we need even more than that in order to, to be effective on 5G. Jan, our first operator on the panel. Yeah, I would say also that it depends on the use case because probably the first use case, and a kind of a joke, is only five is greater than four, meaning <laughs> the enhanced mobile uh, just throughput. And, and one second big use case is the mobile for fixed that is already quite a buzz in the US. So. Um, this probably um, are okay with virtualization. I mean, it, it brings the same benefits as the, as the virtualization brings as large. But if we want to focus on the 5G real differentiation against 4G, it's with the slicing. And then with the slicing, indeed, it uh, needs the virtualization. And that's the real deadline where, and the real use cases where I consider that it's mandatory, more or less, to bring a virtualization in the 5G uh, advent. Well, we're going to come on to use cases soon, hopefully. Um, Diego. Uh, well, l l let me tell a very short story. When I, when I joined Telefonica six or seven years ago, I was really astonished about that the crazy architecture that it was implemented by the network operators. We have, in the, in, the world, in the best case, we have two separated, actually separated networks. I think that uh, precisely the real promise of 5G is uh, 
trying to converge those architectures, having the uh, network sustainable by means of having a single infrastructure that can be sliced and shared and, and uh, uh, adapted to the different use cases and the different uh, requirements. And that implies that either you have it with NFE or you won't have it at all. And when <clears throat> Yeah, I think um, I agree with all what they said. And one of the discussions I was having with one of my colleagues who's on the cloud data center side, um, I was asking them to draw some parallels in the journey that the cloud industry took. Um, I said, hey, what was the journey that you guys took in terms of, was it you know, virtualized all of a sudden? Was it a prerequisite to cloud native? Do they coexist? Um, and I think, they have gone through a similar journey. Um, they, they still have you know, virtualization as a prerequisite for cloudification. They have cloud native, bare metal. Um, they coexist and it completely depends on the use cases. Um, and I think we are looking to adopt a lot of those learnings and technologies into the networking space. Um, and I think we can, we can learn more by looking at, hey, how have they coexisted in the cloud domain and also understand and does it kind of map similarly to the networking domain, or is it completely different? Right. And Marcus? So I think from a technology perspective, you could easily run a 5G radio uh, without virtualization. But from a business perspective, I don't see where the business is coming from. If you, if you start doing 5G, there's a lot of promises around the slicing, about flexibility, about cost matters what NFE helps, uh, more customization, and so on and so forth. I think all of that capabilities which are promised by 5G are only achievable through, through NFE as well. Are there any um, examples? Can, I, can a CSP achieve one of the short-term goals, maybe, maybe enhanced capacity and, and, and more bandwidth um, by using 5G without NFE? Maybe 5G new radio. Is, is there any logical or compelling case why you would launch 5G now and, and with, regardless of NFE? That, that, that depends. I mean, if you entered something that's uh, recently happened, so it's uh, this race for declaring victory on 5G, so and we are the first ones, maybe yes. I mean, if you want to declare victory ahead your competitors and other countries or continents or whatever because you are going to be the first, that depends on what you call 5G. If you want to call 5G, as Marcus was saying, uh, well, uh, <clears throat> higher uh, bandwidth uh, with radio, yes, sure. But whether that's 5G or not is something that is, remains to be seen. I mean, from our, from our side, we, we sort of just did the NFV port already, so there's no, <laughs> this question doesn't, is, uh, is not a question for us. So it's sort of natural, natural way. We already cashed in on some of the benefits of NFV today, and we hope more to come. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, we've seen a couple of examples like that where for a short term, I think it makes sense. Um, it was in the case of um, industrial control. One of our customers is a um, industrial customer. And for them, they want to host just a private network within the factory automation scenario, want low latency for their factory equipment. Um, and I think all they're looking for is really connectivity back to the the you know kind of the bigger LTE network. So for them, from a short-term perspective, for low latency, um, um, you know, insights and control, it does make sense. But this is kind of a, it, it's a very contained factory use case, um, and not really you know represents kind of the entire network. But if you are looking at the entire network, then you do want to look at it beyond just short-term um, goals. Probably we should also honestly talk about the industry maturity because we talk about 5G as a whole, but in fact you have the core that is probably fair enough or mature enough to be virtualized today and yet to have some uh, benefits uh, from this uh, particular uh, um, scope. And then you have the uh, RAN, the radio access network, that also uh, um, is meant to be virtualized, but probably not with the same maturity as this stage. 
and that's the whole, the end-to-end -end virtualization that will bring the, the whole promise, that will bring, bring the slicing capabilities and so on, but maybe we should acknowledge that we do not have the same maturity also, so probably it will be a progressive uh, implementation. Progressive implementation will be probably driven by the business uh, by the business priorities. We have uh, North America already suffering for uh, the spectrum being uh, saturated. So for them, it's just uh, you know a way to give more bandwidth, and more data consumption to their uh, to their customers. We have cases like uh, you know the industrial uh, the industrial case that was mentioned a few minutes ago, right? Where uh, at the end of the day we are speaking about enabling a more effective edge computing in a specific industrial, uh, industrial applications, right? So this will, uh, will, will probably dictate the agenda. So, uh, and at the end, you know, the, 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 readiness, the readiness of the technology will become probably a consequence of the priorities that we will face in the near future, right? Marcus, so you want to add? The projects we have done on the industry side, mm. all of them require some sort of cloud type of technology, whether it's really NFV or not, yeah, this is, we, can, we can discuss. But um, some, some sort of that is sort of a, a must from our customer's perspective as well. Well, look, we, uh, we promised more audience participation uh, in this super panel. So here's an opportunity let's, uh, to get the first question in, or one or two questions. Do, do we have do any thoughts and opinions at this stage from any of our audience members? Any takers for yeah, early question? Yeah. Come on, there's going to be one of you somewhere. Oh, there's a hand at the back. Wonderful. I'm heading your way, sir. <laughs> I'm coming behind you. If you could just stand up and um, if you could stand up so we can, the camera can see you and um, just say your name and company and then. Um, oh, you yeah. can hold that for yeah. me. Yeah. There okay. You go. Uh, Ke Kevin Woods from Lumina Networks. Um, so a lot of times when we talk about 5G, we think about new stuff: NFV, new equipment, new radio, new. New, new things. How, how much of the problem uh, pertains to making some of this technology work on legacy equipment, existing equipment? Take network slicing as an example. Um, is that something that's going to be just deployed on new things, or is that going to be deployed on existing equipment? equipment? And if so, how are you going to solve that problem? First taker? So, let, Marcus? Let me, let me make a sort of comment. We are just just now in the phase of rolling out some of the uh, 3GPP-based IoT network technology, and that you can regard already as a slice. And with all the problems and, and missing standard features, we had to sort of work on get, get it up and running, specifically if it came to sort of charging issues on, on that. And I guess many people around here had, had similar problems. So in that sense, it's sort of the slicing depends a bit on how far you go with the term slice and how much are the requirements to the slice. But in general, we already started doing that on the old equipment or semi-old equipment. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we are able to do that on the GSM network though, but we're going to turn it off anyway. 